So next we're going to move on to subtopic two, which is a false assessment and medication history. So false assessments, um, you know, if you think about it, in one second, an older adult falls in the U.S., uh, and I suppose that is probably common worldwide as well. Um, they're common and underreported, um, and about a third of the community doing uh, adults age 65 and older fall per year. Um, so a simple assessment that you can do is uh, ask, have you fallen in the last year? Um, because uh, after doing a lot of studies, uh, the biggest predictor to find out if a person's going to fall is if they've already fallen in the past. Um, so you want to catch them early. You want to catch them when they had the earlier falls and, and uh, do interventions so that um, they don't get to the fall where they break their hip and have a more serious consequence and end up in the hospital. Um, so have you fallen in the last year? Um, uh, and in between visits, you know, have you fallen since last visit are questions that can help you um, trigger that um, response. So here is the uh, time get up and go is the test that you can uh, use to assess the balance gate and safety of a person. Uh, so what you want to do is you want to see how a person ambulates. Uh, using um, how they usually ambulate. So if they do use an assistive device, then you want to um, uh, have them use that and uh, follow uh, the commands and um, it's strongly correlated to their mobility. So um, what you want them to do is stand up, for, ask them to stand up from a chair um, without using the arms of the chair, preferably. Um, walk three meters then turn around, return to the chair, and sit. Um, and this, uh, if when you time it, um, you know, if a person takes less than 12 seconds, they are, you know, a functional person, um, not at risk of falling. If it's abnormal, then there are higher risk, you know, more than 12, then uh, there are higher risk for falls, fractures, and mortality. And somebody, you know, like more than 20 uh, seconds, uh, you know, it's, um, um, high risk of falling and somewhat of a non-functional ambulator. So when you think about falls, there's multiple causes. There's intrinsic factors which are related to the person. Um, you know, they may have impaired vision and hearing. Um, there's extrinsic factors. Here, I'm just going to click on this. Oh, shoot. Um, so there's intrinsic factors related to the person and that maybe they may have medical conditions so maybe they have diabetes and they have uh, neuropathy and uh, they can't uh, have good sensation of uh, knowing where their feet are is uh, they may have poor vision and hearing which is you know common in older adults they have yellowed corneas and they can't hear well um, they might have um, other changes related to the age, for example, um, your autonomic system doesn't adapt as well. And so when you get up suddenly, um, the blood pressure doesn't adjust as much and they're more prone to orthostatic hypotension um, and falling because of, of those. Um, and then there's also extrinsic factors, which may be, you know, medications that we give, lots of medications. Um, sometimes we lower the blood pressure too much. Um, or we have given them, um, you know, medications for their diabetes and they get hypoglycemic. And unfortunately, all, older persons may not have the symptoms of hypoglycemia because their beta adrenergic system is not as, their autonomic system is not as uh, sensitive. And so then the thing that you may show up is that they fall and they were hypoglycemic and you may not know. Uh, there may be also improper use of assistive devices. Uh, you know, we have people who, maybe are using their rollator and uh, sitting in it and um, the rollator was not meant to sit and roll on it. Um, um, there may be things with the environment, um, you know, if it's uh, poor lightning, the floor is slippery or wet or something of the sort could be contributing to the falls. Um, so here are some of the lists of uh, interventions that you could do if you find that there's a um, person's at risk of fall. 
Um, so regular exercise is important, balanced training, uh, looking at the medication list and minimizing polypharmacy. Um, if they have visual impairment, treat that, uh, manage hypotension. Uh, the other thing is footwear. Um, well, here in, in uh, Texas in the summer, it gets pretty hot and people use the flip flops, which are to provide the pr proper support. Um, so, you know, it's important to have proper footwear that has proper support. Um, next, we're going to talk about uh, the medication history. So, um, you know, a lot of their adults uh, have many medical conditions and they end up being prescribed a lot of medications. They also take a lot of other the counter medication. And so they're at risk of having more adverse drug reactions. The more medicines you have um, that increases, uh, they're also in Increase for impaired cognitions, falls, and functional decline. So then I have a uh, cartoon here, and, and this is, we, we don't want to get into this, but it says, the top prescription is for your arthritis, but it may cause a heart attack. The second prescription should prevent your heart attack, but it could damage your liver. The third should prevent liver trouble, but it may destroy your spleen. And the fourth protects the spleen, but has been known to eat away the prostate. The fifth, so we don't really want to get in that medication cascade. We want to make sure that, um, if if a symptoms arise and you know look at what we're prescribing and seeing if it's one of the uh, causes and then maybe adjust the dose or prescribe something else or or uh, figure something out before we automatically uh, react by addressing another symptom by another medication. So there tends to be a medication disconnect. Uh, you know sometimes I, when I ask my patients. Uh, well, what are the medications you're taking? I'm like, or they all answer something like, well, what you, what you have on your list? And, you know, I, I know I'm like, yeah, but let's see what you're actually taking. Um, because um, usually there's a discrepancy between what I think they should be taking, what the patient understands they should be taking, and what they're actually taking. Uh, so it's important that to know. Um, and they're very important that you specifically ask about over-the-counter medications, uh, herbal medicines, and vitamins, because um, sometimes patients think, oh, well, they're, they're natural medications. They're natural, so they're not medications, but they are. Um, so you want to make sure you know exactly what they're taking and how they're taking. Um, so here are some suggestions um, for when you're taking a medication history. Uh, ask them open in the questions. Like, how do you take your medications? What are the names of your medications? How many times a day do you take your medications? Uh, what other pharmacies you fill your medications? And um, you know that's uh, one of the hard things because we have people filling out in different pharmacies, and you know they you may not know exactly what they're taking, again. you want to know um, which ones and encourage them to only have uh, one pharmacy possible. Um, how many doctors do you see and what do you see them for? That's also important uh, to find out. Um, and then ask how they're uh, assessing, um, adhering to their medications. Um, also something else that you may want to ask is, um, you know, what do you do when you get, what do you take when you get a headache? What do you take if you have uh, allergies or something like that to kind of get a sense of um, sometimes they take over the counter medication and they're already taking uh, medications with some of the same components. So you kind of have to be careful, make sure that um, they're not going to be at risk. Um, as far as your prescribing consideration, there's um, the beers. Um, criteria, which is a list of potentially inappropriate medication. Um, and there are a lot of medications in there and it's not like you can't use, but it's like, well, keep in mind that these are some of the problems and, um, and um, so you, for some, there's no safer uh, options. And so it's just kind of to keep in mind or maybe use a smaller dose. And then there's a few that it's like uh, really don't use medications, but the American Geriatric Societies has uh, these uh, lists uh, for free for download from their website. Uh, or you may 
need to get a free account, but they should be able to download. Um, then there's also some other tools, the, the screening tool, of the STOP, which is a screening tool of older person's prescriptions. And this is to kind of identify things that may put them at risk. Uh, but the, there's also on the flip side, the START, which is a screening tool to other doctors to write treatment to make sure that you are also not missing out on prescribing uh, things that could benefit the patient. So those, those are two things that you should look at. As far as the patient's consideration, when you're prescribing, make sure that the patient can adhere, uh, make sure that they fit the goals of treatment, make sure that they're going to be alive long enough to benefit from the medication in relation to the, their life expectancy. So, um, you know, if their life expectancy is reduced, then maybe they don't really need that cholesterol-lowering medication uh, or other or such so kind of review that depending on the goals of the patient and their life expectancy um, some strategies to improve the medication pills uh, where you, you know there's more detailed ones like the one in the bottom where they have um, for each day of the week they have morning noon evening and uh, bedtime medications and then you can kind of put your medications in there and then know if you took it or not um, here in the states the you know the prescriptions are usually with the child protection caps, but that makes it hard for our patients with arthritis, arthritis and other disorders to, you know, open them up. So if they don't really have, um, you know, children around or, um, you know, that at risk, you want to give them the easy to open medications. Um, now, this is an option, the medications organizing or blister pack, but, uh, you know, that may be kind of expensive to get it done but then again it helps you to easily take your medications and know that you've taken them um, and also um, have the patient have direct education with the pharmacist uh, 